This episode of Musket Matters is brought to you by the Vortex Ball Roller, the fastest way to prepare your round ball ammunition. Find out more at www.forth-armory.com. Howdy folks, welcome to another edition of Musket Matters. Last time we talked about how to determine the uh, length of your chamber and the overall length of your cartridge in a percussion, sharps, rifle, or carbine. Well, I decided to do a little bit uh, of an expansion on that last video and go over the making of the cartridge in detail using the new Eras Gone Richmond Sharps Bullet. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to go through the process here, the steps from beginning to end. Now this is not a historical cartridge. Uh, this is an expedient cartridge based on a historical design uh, for NSSA competition. So period style cartridges were typically you know, spiral wrapped so they'd be stronger and more durable and transport and that sort of thing and in use. Uh, mine are designed uh, as we saw in the last video where we came up with the dimensions for the, for the, the cartridge paper. They're designed to be straight cut, so you can cut them with a straight edge and a razor knife, uh, and you just roll them up and glue them, and they have a single vertical edge. Uh, and I've, I'm using 17 pound vellum, which I found on Amazon. And uh, the whole idea here is to have a cartridge that disintegrates into confetti very easily for competition, because you don't want to have any remnants in the chamber if you can help it. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna cover here today. Like I said, in the last video we covered how to arrive at the dimensions of this paper. And if you need to refer to that, then see the previous video. But um, in this case, I've already figured out the dimensions that we need. And so we know where a cartridge paper size needs to be. All right, so I found since the last video, I found some tools that uh, really help make these things uh, in regards to this new bullet and the size of the heel on the Richmond um, Sharps bullet here. Well, one of the first things here is a, is a piece of brass pipe, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this is 1730 seconds, if I'm remembering. Um, I'll, I'll post it in the video, um, a link to the actual dimension. But it's very close in size to our bullet heel. So it makes a, a perfect mandrel for rolling our cartridges. The other thing is being hollow, when you withdraw the, the mandrel from your cartridge, you know, once you've got the uh, end cap glued on, when you pull it out, because this is hollow, the, there's no suction. You know, it doesn't try to stick and stay on the, on the former. So um, you can, you know, uh, the brass, it's nice, it's the perfect dimension. One thing I needed to do was round the end very slightly. And that's so when you are um, making the paper end cap, you can get it back into the, into the tube. Uh, and, and we'll go over that. But So you, you needed to have a rounded edge. And the way I achieved that rounded edge, Harbor Freight sells a doming block. And if you very lightly tap, you know, hammer this down into one of these spherical cavities, it will round uh, the edges very nicely. If you don't want to do that, uh, go to that kind of trouble. Like I said, this is the perfect size, but you could also make yourself one out of wood. I do recommend that you drill a through hole. You know, you can drill it from both ends if you need to, um, so that when you withdraw it, it doesn't uh, want to suck the, the cartridge back down onto the, onto the mandrel. So this is uh, my mandrel now that I use for making the cartridge. It makes perfectly sized cartridges for the new Eras Gone Richmond Sharps Bullet. The other thing I needed was uh, a way to punch a, an appropriate sized wad, cardboard wad, that would fit in these tubes. And it turns out a metric 13 millimeter punch is exactly what you need to punch a, a wad that's going to fit in there. Now, to make the wads, I just use a cereal box or any kind of similar cardboard and I use a nylon cutting board as a surface to protect the punch and a mallet and you can hammer those out and in no time at all you'll have hundreds of, of wads. Now why do we use a wad? Well typically with these cartridges you know the military style cartridge they would just fill it to the rim and, and then cap it off with the bullet and uh, that was that. So there, the, this thing was full of powder. But for target shooting, you almost never get maximum accuracy with the maximum load. And so if you don't have a maximum load, 
then it is advantageous to have a wad glued in there that keeps all the powder at the back of the cartridge because that's where the fire from the percussion cap is going to be coming through and the sharps already has a convoluted and long fire channel that that cap blast has to get through and then it has to blast through this curling paper and uh, get to the powder so anything we can do to keep that powder back there towards the back end of the cartridge is probably a good thing the other thing it does is by having a wad in there every cartridge the powder is arranged the same way in the in the tube so you don't have some where the powders that you know if you if you lowered the muzzle down you know the powder might settle towards the bullet if you rose it up a little bit while you were capping maybe the powder would be towards the back if you were held it just right maybe it would kind of be level in the in the in the along the cartridge and so by using a wad it, your your load fires off the same way every time so there's that okay so with no further ado let's get along with making an actual cartridge so um, to make the cartridge body i just use elmer's glue sticks doesn't really matter what kind um, these are purple and it dries clear so it lets you see um, you know where you've applied the glue and that's that's nice so the first thing you're going to do is take one of your cartridge papers that we already arrove at the dimensions for these in the last video and it helps to have a scrap piece of paper so you don't get glue on a desk or whatever and you just rub a little bit out along the edge of the paper like so and then you take your mandrel and you want to roll it up nice and straight and that's it and you can see when you look at it you know whether you've you've got a nice straight uh, ends or not the ends of the of the paper line up or not if they don't you can you can press on it a little bit you can correct that mistake if you don't you know wrap it exactly straight you can usually save them so that's it so that's your your paper tubes and you know i'll put a bunch of those in a in a can like this to save them up and let them dry so that's that's the making of the body so the next thing we have to do is we have to cap off the end of the cartridge so i'll take one of these tubes that has already dried and, and been made and then here's the hair curler paper. And uh, this you can buy from any beauty supply shop. I get this from Sally Beauty, uh, Jumbo End Wraps they're called. Uh, some people call them hair curler paper. And um, I use a one inch punch. Now you can just cut them into squares, but you'll get more out of them if you use a, a round hole punch. And it makes for a nice, consistent, even um, end cap. You know so so that's nice too it's just easier to do i find you can knock out you know a thousand of them in five minutes so it's important you know when you when you knock these off with the with the punch you know they they come out they tend to bunch together and so it's very easy to to get you know two of them stuck together so it's really important when you if you use the punch or even if you don't to make sure that you've only picked up one end cap because like i said the sharps, it's hard enough to cook them off as it is. Um, you don't want to have to blast through <clears throat> multiple sheets of paper to make, make it go off. Okay, so with my mandrel, we've got the rounded end here. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. And I'm going to place my, end, uh, my hair curler over the end of it. And you just rub it down. Okay, and then you take your paper tube and you kind of work this onto it like so and you get it about halfway in there okay and then we're going to get some elmer's glue and you're going to take a tool of some kind you can use a a q-tip a, a shaft sometimes i'll cut off the fuzzy end of a q-tip but anyway I've, I've got a little tool here so you just get some glue and you rub it along the inside of the case mouth like so and then you just push the the uh, end cap up until it's flush with the end of the of the tube and i roll it around in my fingers a little bit to make sure i have good contact You'll notice as I was making that, I was spinning it. That's so it smears the glue as it goes. And then you just pull the mandrel out and, and there it is. That's the finished paper tube.
So we'll do that again. I'll, I'll go through those steps again. So take our piece of paper, take our glue stick, take our mandrel, See, that one's not quite aligned, so if you push on it a little bit, you can get them to line, get the ends to line up. So there we go. There's another tube. All right, and then to cap the end of the tube, we make sure that we have one end cap. Put it on the end of our mandrel. Take our paper tube. And get it started, take a dab of glue, run it around the inside there, end of the end of the tube, twist and push until we're flush with the end of the tube. Roll it between your fingers a little bit. Now you want to make sure, you know, sometimes you'll have some excess glue appear here around the perimeter of the cartridge end, and that's okay. Just make sure you don't get any glue over the face of that end cap because you'll never blast through that with a percussion cap. So don't get any glue on the end of your, of your cartridge, okay? All right, so that's that. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is charge the cartridge and cap the bullet. So I've got a bunch, I've got a tray of, of cartridges here that are dried and ready to use, all right? And so the way that we'll use these is just like charging, you know, traditional, uh, NSSA cartridges, you'll, you'll take your loading tray and have it filled up with ready-to-go cartridges. Yep, I see that one's torn, so we're not going to use that one. All right, and uh, get your charge, you know, whatever you find your charge to be, and we'll do a video here coming up on how to work up a load, but um, I've just got a random amount of powder in here. I don't know how much it actually is. And so, You'll take your, your funnel and take your charge. And as you can see here, if I hold that up, the, the pot powder is only about halfway up the, the tube. All right, so, and that's, that's typical. So the next thing you need to do is put a wad in there, okay? And again, these were punched out with a 13 millimeter punch. And I have found a really nice and easy way to get these things um, put into the cartridge. And the way you do that, although I'm missing one of the tools I need to, to pry it off, but if you take your car, your, um, your wad and you take something, I, I made this, it was just um, an old model paintbrush that I um, glued a, a, a pin into, you know, the body of a, a pin, just took the head off and glued it in the end here. Um, but you can use any similar thing, pair of tweezers, anything like that. And have something soft uh, and resilient like an old mouse pad. And you take this and just spear the wad. Otherwise, it's real finicky to get these things down into the tube, all right? But once you've done that, now the trick is you have to have something to push on it and, and get it to come out. Let's see if my glasses will do. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Normally I have another little pick that I use to hold that thing in there while you pull your, your pin out. So now we've got our wad on top of our powder charge. All right, and so if you want, you can take your mandrel and tap it a bit to make sure that the powder is compressed and evenly seated. And then again, you can take a tool. Again, you know, I'm using this, but you can use a, a Q-tip with the fuzzy end cut off and run a bead just you know doesn't have to be a lot of glue it's just enough to keep that wad to sit in place okay and that's that's that all right so now we got to seat our bullet well again take our bullet take some glue put it around the heel of the bullet and spin it while you seat it and you want to seat it up to the driving band. And that's it. That's a completed uh, cartridge for the Sharps carbine or rifle using the new Era's Gone 
uh, Sharp, Richmond Sharps Bullet. Uh, and that's, that's all you do. And you'll make up a whole bunch of these. And then the, the last step is to dip these in lube um, so you get that lube groove uh, with some lube in it. Um, so that's, that's it for making our cartridge. So I hope you like that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave comments below. I usually respond to those pretty quickly. And if you have any uh, other questions or concerns, feel free to get in touch. If you like the video, please uh, click on the like button and uh, subscribe. We'll be making more videos like this. Thanks a lot.